appreciate that, that not to be repetitive and to keep your comments concise so that everyone gets an opportunity. Um, but your opportunity will be up as soon as uh, the presentation for the budget is done. Thank you. So public hearing on the budget now. Thank you, Mayor. The public hearing this evening will provide a budget overview for the city's operations, which include the general debt service, special revenue, and capital project funds. As in prior years, the budget process began several months ago with setting budget goals, which also aid in the budget document preparation. The final committee of the whole budget meeting concluded on October 9th, whereby the committee recommended certain adjustments to the general operating budget to offset the updated state revenue from funding decrease. All adjustments have been included in the public hearing budget agenda documentation. This next chart provides a financial summary of the city funds as outlined in the budget overview and include 2017 actual, 2018 projected, and 2019 budgeted revenues, expenditures, fund balance, and tax data. As noted, the 2017 net revenues and fund balance are elevated due to the debt issuance required for funding the City Hall, Public Works, and Public Safety Facility projects. The 2019 levy adjustment includes $226,783 of tax increment district funds to be raised and $200,000 for general operations expenditure increases, which are itemized below the chart. Please note the employee wage and benefit pay scale and merit increase adjustments will be funded by the reduction in the prior year contingency account. Of the total $13.4 million tax levy, $10.7 million will fund expenditures for basic operations in the general fund, $2.1 million will be dedicated for principal and interest payments, and $548,000 will be applied towards the active tax district increments. As for the city tax rate, recent state levy limit mandates included a new reduction to the allowable increase for personal property aid. And although net new construction amounted to a 2.045% increase, the city was restricted to a 1.65% levy limit due to the newly implemented adjustment. For 2019, the city will utilize 1.585%, which resulted in an estimated city tax rate of $4.50 per $1,000 of assessed value <clears throat> and is nine cents higher than the prior year. The following four slides summarize the general fund revenue and expenditure categories, which reflect a balanced increase of $235,023 and are accounted for in the previous financial summary page. This increase amounts to a monthly cost of approximately $53 per capita using the latest population estimate of 24,812 and is equal to the prior year calculation. The next fund included in this public hearing is the debt service fund and is used to account for the principal and interest payments on all general obligation debt. Funding sources include property taxes, tax increment financing, conservation fund reimbursement and interest earnings. For the current year, the city's total principal balance outstanding is 46 million, leaving a debt capacity of 110 million or 70.43%. The recent debt refunding will support the current facility projects and two major upcoming road improvement projects. Future borrowing plans and debt levy projections continue to indicate minimal increases. Summarized in this following chart are the special revenue funds, otherwise known as specific purpose programs. The expenditure activities for 2019 resulted in a projected grand total for all funds combined of approximately 5.3 million, which is up by 1.1 million as compared to the prior year. The majority of this increase is due to the landfill funding for volunteer fire department capital equipment purchases. Other items include various park structure and parking lot improvements, along with tax increment financing and conservation related debt payments. The final budgets for review at this public hearing are the 2019 capital budgets, which are proposed at 10.8 million, the major items which will be financed by 8.5 million of general obligation debt include the Bay Lane reconstruction project and continuation of the construction phases for the police department facility project. The remaining items will be funded by 2.3 million of landfill host fees 
and consist of various equipment requests from the finance, information technology, library, public safety, and public works departments. This concludes our 2019 budget public hearing presentation. All proposed balanced bu budgets include the tax levy, including the tax levy, will be considered for approval at the upcoming Common Council meeting tomorrow evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I also have to add, per the City Attorney Jeff Warchel, I want to remind you, you all know public hearings is strictly for public input. There's no discussion this evening whatsoever. And, um, and also to all of you, it has to pertain to the budget, the 2019 budget. It, there can't be any dis uh, topics of any other kind. So with that, I welcome whoever would like to come up. You can start a line if you like to and state your name and address. Good evening, Karen Nickel. Uh, my address is South 68 West 17575 East Drive here in Muskego. I'm the director of Muskego Senior Taxi, and I would like to thank you for your continued support of Muskego Senior Taxi. According to the Southeastern Wisconsin Planning Commission, 10% of Waukesha County residents are transit dependent. Most of these people are 65 and over or younger with disabilities. Muskego Senior Taxi was de developed as a solution to this issue. Through the taxi service offered by 30 community volunteer drivers, seven volunteer board members, three staff members, countless community businesses and residents um, work together to get our residents um, traveling to medical clinics to stay healthy and avoid emergency medical calls. Young adults can obtain opportunities for training and employment to become more independent and contribute to our community. The city can share in our success story of supporting 250 families and providing 600 rides monthly for loved ones to gain the access they need to goods and services to improve the well-being of their entire family. I think we can all agree that Muskego residents are caring individuals who are concerned for the well-being of their neighbors and want the city to continue supporting this important service that they asked for a decade ago. Similar to emergency medical services, we all hope we won't need the service, but at some time in our lives, most of us will. The city's financial support provides a base from which we can build and grow to meet the needs of our community. Thank you. I was going to end here, but I saw there was some information going about um, regarding another taxi service, and we just wanted to share with you information about the Muskego taxi service. Um, the program was developed 11 years ago with one car. There are currently a fleet of five vehicles. Current monthly rides provided are 600 a month or 30 a day. The income structure to date is 55.9% of the income is from riders or third party payers such as Medicaid. 41.1% of income is from donations and grants, including 20% from the county and 5% from the city. Um, with the administrators, part-time staff, and others working very hard to obtain the additional funding to keep the cost of the rides um, down to the predominantly low-income ridership who are seniors and people with disabilities. So that is our philosophy, and we hope you share that philosophy of supporting those who need us most. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hi. Hi there. State I, your name and address. Dakota Schwen, 27001 South Elm Lane. Can you say it again louder? 27001 South Elm Lane. Elm Lane? In Wind Lake. Oh, I'm sorry, he can't speak. Yeah, it's true. Yes. I, I'm going to allow it, but I honestly, if the city attorney is here, he'd probably say no, but go ahead. Um, my, my, well, you see, um, I want, I want to give out three reasons for why the senior taxi should stay. Number one, it helps me get 
to work on time, you know, to my dream job, which is the library, and then number two is is that mom and dad are never there, are never, are never, well, there to drop me off, which is what the taxi's for. And then for number three, it, it, I'm always independent with the taxi. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hi, my name is Sue Casper, W163 South 7942 Bay Lane Place out in Muskego. My daughter, Amy Casper, who's here, she works at Pick and Save, and she works first shift. She wouldn't be able to work because I, I used to work third shift to get her to work. We moved to Waukesha County because she couldn't. We originally were in Greenfield. We couldn't find work opportunities. She got hooked up with DVR in Waukesha County. We moved to Muskego. Found a perfect job at Pick and Save. I worked third shift, so I was able to take her to and from. My plant shut down, so now I have to work first shift. I heard about the Muskego taxi, senior taxi cab. That was a blessing to us because they get her to work most of the time. They bring her home. They also take her to camp on Mondays where she can learn to be independent. We're hoping that eventually she'll be able to live on her own or in a group home, but she needs to keep working at Pick and Save. She loves Pick and Save. You probably know her from Pick and Save. And the senior taxi cab is helping her with that independence. If we had, we, we don't have anybody else to rely on to make sure she gets there safely. She could walk to and from, it's about three miles, but she doesn't know how to check for traffic. We try continually, she will not check for traffic. That scares the crap out of us and we don't want to see her getting injured. She's, you know, she's, she offers, people offer her rides and she's so friendly, we don't know if she'll get a ride from a stranger. This is very safe. She's friends with the senior taxi cab driver. She knows them by name. They're great people. We just need to keep it in, she, affordable and we need to keep it here. And, and that's all, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hi, my name is Jill Kobernick. I live at S97 West 13468 Lloyd Mangrum Court um, in Muskego. And again, I just want to um, thank you for uh, supporting the cab for this year. And I just want to say, as was mentioned before, the importance of this cab service for our families, not only for elderly people, but for um, our children who are disabled. My daughter who is here with me tonight. She's 26 years old. She's been using the cab for the past five years. She is a hard working, go-getting young girl. She um, is cognitively disabled. She worked um, five days a week up until the last year. She worked three days at St. Vincent de Paul in Greenfield and she works at a Walgreens near our home for two days out of the week. She currently is working three days a week and volunteers at West Dallas Memorial Hospital on, uh, in the lab on Tuesdays. Uh, my husband and I are both working, and um, there would have been no way she would be able to get to any of those jobs if it were um, not for the senior cab. She some days takes two rides, sometimes three, due to her activities. And it's not usually for social reasons. It's mostly for work and getting her out and being independent. Um, Courtney loves her independence. She loves her paycheck. She's a taxpayer. She has SSI. She does not have a lot of income. It fe it's fearful for all of us who have a child like, our, like mine is that we want them to be independent. They don't make a lot of money, and this cab service, they, help, they get help individually funded through her, her IRIS program, which pays for a lot of the cab services. But the importance is, is that that independence that it affords her to be in the community, she meets people in the community, they know her, she feels like a superstar. She walks by, there's one of the cab drivers, she's waving, she's, oh yeah, there's my cab driver. Um, she's allowed to go to work and be out in the community and doing positive things for other people. So we know that um, the approval was in the budget or that you're looking to approve the funding for it, and we thank you, but we just really want to clarify how important this service is to our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Next. <clears throat> I'm David McCoy. This is my son, Calvin. We live at South 75 West 12470 Stratford Court in the Lake Brittany subdivision. Occasionally, I'm asked what it's like to have a son with a disability. And my answer is, it's a permanent 15-year-old. Because at 15 years old, 
you're old enough to have social activities, you're old enough to have athletic activities, you're old enough to have a job, and you're not old enough to drive. How many of you have had a 15-year-old that couldn't wait till they were 16? Uh-huh, I see at least one smile. This is a situation with most of us who have children with disabilities, and quite frankly, having seen my mother-in-law go through a similar situation, those people who have elderly parents in the area as well. You can't wait, but they'll never make it to 16. And the thing that you really want is them to be able to drive. It's not going to happen. Calvin takes a senior taxi one day a week. <coughs> I drive him to work at the Y twice a week, and he walks, or I take him to Tudor Oaks one day a week where he also volunteers. This is his social activity, and it is also his job, and his job is important for his mental health as well as his physical health and his social health. And it's important for the community to see people with disabilities working. Right now, I'm semi-retired. I can afford the time to make these trips. Several years ago, I wasn't retired, and Calvin was taking three trips a week to the Y, and my, because my wife was going down to take care of her mother one week a month. Without the senior taxi, this wouldn't happen. Alternatives, Uber, maybe, if they come out and you, ne they don't make, you can't pre-plan and he can't make a phone call every time he needs a trip. And at least with my experience with Uber is, if the driver doesn't decide to come and he doesn't show up, you're kind of out of luck. With a senior taxi, we know he's going to show up because they show up every time. And we know the history of the drivers, we know the reliability of the drivers. Calvin's on Medicaid, so his, his payment or his trip costs are covered in that respect. But without the senior taxi being here, he would literally be at home playing video games all day. Not a really good way to spend your time. We truly would not be where we are today with many of the things he does without the senior taxi. He's been a writer since it started. Thank you very much for supporting senior taxi in the past. And we hope you will continue to support senior tax in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Oh, you can go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about you. Um, well, oh, um, Dean, uh, thank you for your service with my friend Neil. And he, he's the best guy for, for my senior taxi. <laughs> thank you, Neil. Thank you. Next. <clears throat> Hi, thank you. My name is Renee Seaman. I live um, at W204 South 7764 Gaffney Drive here in Muskego. I've been here almost uh, 25 years. We moved, our daughter Stephanie who isn't here tonight because she's at Culver, so if you want to see what she looks like, I'm sure you guys probably all know her. She's an icon there. She's been there for six or seven years, all due to the taxi being able to drive her. She also works at Walgreens right next door, and the other side she also works at Alpine. Um, it's a it, it's a feat to, to try to manage somebody's schedule besides the, the transportation because as you can imagine I work my husband works he's a teacher so I don't think he's he's not in the city of Muskego here but where he does work they wouldn't let him leave at um, 10, 10 o'clock on Thursday to get her to her job so you know this service is very vital like everybody else has indicated um, you know she works evenings that's us driving her she works Monday nights, Tuesday nights, she works Saturday, and we're driving. I know one of the board members here asked uh, if parents could be a little bit more involved, and if you have a week, I could stay with you, or you could stay with us and see what we do for these individuals. Yesterday, more than half of us were all day at a Special Olympics tournament, which we have to drive them to. Um, I know somebody mentioned Uber or Lyft. They are, you can't use public service um, to help support a Uber or Lyft. You have to pay for that yourself. In Muskego, again, they're not always reliable. We did have Stephanie try a lift about three weeks ago on a Sunday night. So we did it. Somebody picked it. He had just been doing it only a week. He came all the way from West Dallas. I'm thinking, why would he do that? Probably to build his book. She gets in the car. She sits in the front seat. We said, no, 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 you sit in the back seat. When Neil drives her or the others, she knows who they are. These other people, we don't. She gets in. She goes, oh, my dad's following us. So, I mean, these types of things, these kids don't have a filter. The senior taxi is reliable. I mean, Karen does a wonderful job with the staff, but they're volunteers. We have one paid driver. That's what's increasing our costs. We have paid drivers. The insurance, I'm in insurance. A taxi, this is a taxi. The insurance is outrageously priced, and it's going to continue. 
Um, so those are the things that we need the help additional funding for because you can't keep asking the services that help support these individuals. They won't, they, they, the, the money's the money and you have to make it work. So, um, you know, I, I say to that, you know, it, it's a wonderful service. And, and if anybody really wants to talk more individually to any of us, I'm sure we'd do that. The bus line in Waukesha only goes about three mile perimeter. Unfortunately, when we moved here 25 years ago, we didn't know Stephanie had the disabilities that she has today because she doesn't look like she has disabilities. Um, we also ask our neighbors and grandparents, but you know, when you have a 27 year old and you keep asking and you, you, you send your neighbor a text saying, hey, what are you doing Saturday? She knows what you're doing. You're asking for that help because you might have to be somewhere else. Um, so anyways, we know that the taxi doesn't surprise, give us that support on the weekends, but we certainly during the week when we're at work would like to have that continued support. So we do thank you for the, the money and I know that there's additional funding that has been promised for this year and we hope that it continues and that you continue to um, support Mission. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Laura Vogel, S79W17864, Scenic Drive in Skigo. Um, this is my son, Kevin. About two years ago, he was presented with a wonderful opportunity to do positive project search at the zoo. It was a nine month commitment, five days a week. And the taxi stepped up and said that they could get him there and help driving because it was overwhelming for me. Both the husband and I are tax accountants and work a lot. So they were able, a driver came in early, three days a week, to pick him up at 7.30 because he started at 8, helped get him to the zoo two days a week. We, they brought him back from the zoo. We got the rest, neighbors, friends. Um, the taxi allows us, or Muskego, to be workable for us. That's what it gives us. It, otherwise, we'd be considering moving out, moving to Milwaukee, someplace where there is mass transit. Um, but the tax is wonderful because we love the drivers, and it's dependable, always. Hello, my name is Kevin Vogel, SO9-1864, Seattle Drive, Mesquite, Wisconsin, 53150. I still live with my mom. I'm just so grateful that the city gave me the opportunity to go to Project Search, because not too many people have had that chance. It just gave me a second chance and a new lease on work and life, and just gave me the greatest perspective <laughs> of friends that I, that I know I will have forever. So without that, I would have, I don't know where I would have been. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? My name's David Espervoa, uh, W171S8010 in Lennon Drive. Uh, I've been a uh, resident of Muskego since uh, 2002. I'm a currently an instructor at uh, Waukesha County Technical College. Um, I'm an only child. I moved my parents up here from Texas. Uh, don't ask me why I came up here from Texas, but I, I'm getting there. And uh, yes. I know you. I know you. I, I, oh. Uh, the, then you just registered who your parents were. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, when I moved them up here, I'm an only child, like I said, and uh, I moved them from Texas to be close to me so I could take care of them. And I, one of my concerns was exactly how I was going to be able to give them some sort of independence. They live at the Regency. And uh, that concern was alleviated when I moved up here because in 2008, I believe the taxi cab service was just starting up. Uh, they've been able to, um, even though I have a somewhat flexible schedule uh, from semester to semester and I see my parents every day uh, and take them as much as possible to their various doctors for various maladies that they have, um, there's times when I simply cannot do it. Uh, there's times when, um, uh, just from logistical standpoints, and uh, the cab has always been there. Uh, they've gone through lots of changes. I've seen, seen things happen since, uh, you know, uh, as, as they've grown since uh, when I first started. And, but they've always been there. They've always been an asset. Uh, they give my parents the semblance of some independence, which I think is very important uh, when you reach their age. Um, I know that, um, that they have provided, uh, that we provide a service uh, 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 to them as much as possible whenever there's fundraisers to try and help out as, as much as we can. Uh, I know that they're often perceived as a part of the community. 
I remember the first uh, year that we were up, there was a, a parade and they were in it and it was so, and my dad rode in the cab along with it and was just like, okay, now you're part of being up here and, and part of the community kind of thing. And so there's always been this sort of reliance there for, for them as well. Um, I believe it provides peace of mind for people and it's neat just sitting here and listening to other people's stories about how it impacts their lives and I think sometimes we forget about that. Um, I know it, it's called the senior taxi, but I never realized how many other people uh, were benefiting from it as well because of, uh, because of uh, their presence. Um, I just uh, wanted to just, if I can, just thank you guys for, uh, for what I'm finding out as far as the support that's been given in the past from the city. I would like to ask that you guys continue to do that because um, it's hard to really quantify things like this. I know it comes down sometimes to numbers and those things, but really when you see the impact in people's lives, and in the families' lives as well that extend beyond, I think it really does uh, show you just what can be done with a great idea and from the support from the community for those ideas. So I thank you for your time, and I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hello. I'm Joy Hemmer, um, S110 W20592 Danoon Road. Um, I thought I'd give you a real quick perspective on the volunteering, you heard from a lot of wonderful people, and I know most of these young people, and I know David's parents. Um, I first heard about the taxi a couple years ago when I saw a little article in the paper, and I thought, boy, that sounds great. I'm getting to be a senior citizen, and someday I might need that. And then after I read a little further, I thought, well, you know what? I'm okay right now. Maybe I could volunteer. And I did, I started, and it's not a huge commitment, but it's been a wonderful payback to me. And I haven't told them yet, but in a month or two, I'm going to have some surgery, and I'm going to have to be calling on the taxi. But I just think as a retired nurse, you should know that for, to see these people, a lot, of the, a lot of my riders, to be able to just get out, you know, and not be shut in, it's, it's, it's important for for them to be part of a community. So thanks again, as everyone said, for the past support, continued, and future. Thanks. Thank you. Next. I'm Jim, I'm Jim Nichols. My address is S78W20506 Monterey Drive. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, memo um, in regard to the McGuanago uh, taxi service. Um, so, as far as an offer to consol consolidate with um, Muskego Senior Taxi, there was never any formal proposal um, that I have seen. Um, back in 2000, and well, it started probably more in like 2012 or 13. Dan Henry, the then director of the taxi, became ill and. Um, his health continued to to decline. Um, his family stepped up, and together with um, his wife Amy and son Brian, they um, they were um, instrumental in keeping the service going. Um, Dan passed away in January of 2014. I made a commitment to Dan and to his wife, more specifically. Um, she, um, I, she pleaded with me not to look for a replacement during his sickness. She felt that that would, would end his life sooner because he was so committed and involved with the taxi. After he had passed, um, we, we started our search for a new director. And at that point in time, I reached out to Jack Weber to bounce some ideas off of him. At that point in time, he might have mentioned to me um, consolidating, but he had offered the possibility of one of his um, people that were part-time at the time. Now he has a full-time um, assistant director, and he um, kicked around the idea of offering him part-time and then Jack part-time as well for the taxi. And so there was never any formal... Um, offer to, to merge the services. Um, and as far as the satellite, we haven't heard anything about a satellite in Muskego either. I know that um, oftentimes if we're unable 
to assist somebody because of ambulatory reasons, I a, a, a wheelchair, we have no lifts or vans, we'll refer them to McGuanagall. And so um, we do partner with them in, in different ways um, as that goes. Um, and I do know that um, although things aren't as rosy as the memo points out, and I'm not here to, to um, uh, degrade Maguanago Taxi in any fashion because they're doing a marvelous job, but I do know that um, there's been comments that um, some of the, there's a, a consortium of the taxis where they're looking to try, they were looking to try to um, consolidate or make the services more efficient, and that really hasn't come to fruition as of yet. And I know this past summer at one of the meetings, um, I, I wasn't present at the meeting, but there was a few <coughs> folks from Muskego Senior Taxi with, that were there, and the comment from Maguanago was they were wondering how they were going to make payroll. So whether they want to admit it or not, there's struggles for them as well. And you can only charge so much above and beyond um, what uh, providers, um, uh, so in other words, Waukesha, actually the, the per ride um, subsidy is $5, not three seventy-five, but there's only so much more that you can charge and then the service is no longer affordable to the many folks that really can't afford a full fair taxi. And so I'm not certain that I'd be able to be here tomorrow night when you guys are going to debate these things, but I just wanted to talk about that a little bit tonight. And I too appreciate all your backing and, and your support of the taxi throughout the years. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Brian Kramer, West 188, South 10751, Muskego Dam Road. I've been out in Muskego about 20 years, known a number of aldermen over the years. Most of the alder men and women uh, ran for office because they want to make a difference, as did the mayor. I have seen the city grow. We have a beautiful new building here and police department, and et cetera. Um, the taxi has grown, too, and it's part of an established infrastructure now with the city. And as the state <coughs> model says, forward, I would ask each of you to look at one another and realize that each of you may or may not sometime need the taxi coming up yourselves or loved ones. And as the city grows with independent housing, multi-structured residences on Lannan, uh, you have other subdivisions with single family dwellings, the city is growing. The demand for this taxi is only going to go one way, and that's up. And that's a guarantee. And without continued support each year, monetarily, and incrementally increasing, and actually looked at as a serious part of the budget each year, it's going to falter. There's no denying the growth of the city is here. And without your vision of looking forward, each of you, to help support this program, it will not continue. And all these people that benefited from it now, where are they going to go? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay. With that then, the public hearing is now closed. Thank you for coming. Um, city official reports, I have none this evening. Communications are miscellaneous business. Future agenda items. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Sorry. I'm not sure. But I know they're on the table.